No, no, honey, I'm gonna I'm gonna paint right here. Okay, can you go watch your video over here? You'll be fine. Hello, everybody. Today we're gonna be painting the frog emus, the elephant-sized amphibious predator that lurks deep in the swamps, revered by bullywugs and feared by adventurers who happen to know the tales of them and heard about them in le le myth and legend. Stay tuned, I'm going to show you how to paint this. I'm going to put all the colors up that I'll be using. Uh, it's a pretty free, simple build and paint, and stay tuned. Okay, so starting off today, we're going to be using the he we're going to be using heavy green for the base coat. We're then going to wash the heavy green. Uh, what this will do is it'll be able to get in the recesses and add shadow and effect to the frog even because you notice the frog even has lots of creases from his uh, fat body and the skin not being entirely attached, or that's how amphibians are. We're then going to dry. We're going to dry brush goblin green, which is going to be a lighter green. It's going to really bring out the pop, uh, make the the higher raised areas pop out more give more depth we're then going to use and that's that's my helper today yeah, that's, that's the frog emus yeah that's, that's the frog the emus elephant. Oh, yep then we're going to use a heavy uh, violet <laughs> okay buddy <laughs> we use a heavy violet to do the interior of the mouth because uh jack here wants uh purple wants them to have a purple mouth we're going to use Game, we're gonna be using uh, violet ink. Uh, <laughs> hi, I don't know. It's okay. Can you go back to watch your video, so Daddy can make this video? Thank you. So we're gonna use violet ink to kind of help wash the mouth out, so we get the creases in there. We will then be using a uh, purple worm, which is gonna be a really light purple, to dry brush it, to add more effect, and then we're gonna highlight using uh, pixie dust pink. Then the little nodules at the end of the tongue. What's that? This is the That's a frog Yep. Oh, a can't. Yep, that's a frog emus. <laughs> He's all excited to see himself on camera. Then we're going to use the nodules here. We're going to paint those red. Yeah, we then we're going to use skeletal bone to paint the teeth. A sepia wash to, to wash the teeth to make them look more like teeth and not just, you know, pop out white or pale we're going to use pale yellow for the eyes and then one little bit of black to use the irises in the eyes which is going to do a straight line across okay let's go ahead and get started so first we're going to do is we're going to base coat the heavy green Is that the frog emus? I don't know if it's a frog migas. Is it a frog migas or frog emus? Frog migas. Oh, the frog emus. Okay, not the frog migas. It has two eyes. He's got three eyes. He got one, two, three, four, five. Six, no, he's got. I'm impressed you count to six, but he's only got three eyes. Three eyes. Yep, he's got three eyes. I'm hoping he's saying three and not freak. And just so you know, base coat is real simple. Just get in there, get all the little, just get all the paint on it. It doesn't matter how dirty and messy you are. Matter of fact, you want to be kind of messy because that way you don't see any of the 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 mold when you're done. I even recommend painting the eyes themselves like all the way because we're gonna be washing it. 
Can we paint the yellow? We paint the eyes yellow. I don't want to see any gray poking through like you see right there. Sorry, I was off camera. I don't want you, I don't want it to be painted. I don't want it to be a mold line between. So painting making mistakes in this stage is not a big deal. Sometimes I find it to be easier to make mistakes now. And then later on it actually turns out to be a happy coincidence. Because I can just paint over it. Oh, but he gets his mouth. Yep, it's in his mouth. You got hurt? Yeah. How'd you get hurt? Back. 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 And that's the frog emus. You get used to trying to paint with the toddler because he's just gonna toddler give me a toddler. I actually made a decision that I'm going to do some painting series items with my daughter as well. I think she'll Enjoy it, and we can do this projects together. I think that'd be fun. You okay? Mm -hmm. Now, of course, I was doing a more detailed. Are you are you helping yourself up here? Are you getting up in here? I'm gonna get back of me. You wanna get in the back of me? Um, this frog is fun. Yeah, that's the frog emus. Um this is the frog meal. That's the frog emus. Um what's the frog meal is there? Yep. He's getting ready to pounce on something. He asked if you guys can't hear him. He asked what's the frog he was doing. He's doing a uh, uh, no. Yep, he's he's waiting to get his someone to eat. Um, he's gonna eat your uncle Lyndon or your uncle TJ, right? No. No? He just he just yours. He's just mine? No, he's just mine. Oh, he's yours. This is for me. Certain for yes, this one could be for you. I'm paying him for you. That's why he's getting a purple mouse. Remember, you said, "Daddy, I want him to have a purple mouse." You paint my goblins for me. I did paint the goblins for you. Yes. Daddy, for me. Is what for you? Well, I'm going to use them, too. Is that okay? Yeah. Thank you. You're so kind. Um, what's the frog me was doing? He's getting ready to attack some unsuspecting travelers. Or maybe he's going to eat the horses that the travelers left sitting there. Hey, or... Daddy, look at this tongue. The tongue. Yep. The tongue. The tongue. He got... Two 
Yep. Yeah. Well, base code normally is boring, but that's what children are for to make things not boring, right? They want to be involved and you got to come to a point where you're like, I'm going to let you be involved in my hobbies and what I want to do. So Jack is going to be the start of including the kids in this froggy, froggy myth. That's true. Yeah. yeah. I think my daughter will be excited to paint yeah. her figurines in front of this, you guys. This frog me was, uh, what the frog me was, he was, uh, he was. Yep. Okay. Well, when I do the, when I do the detail work, we'll. Which is great about this figurine. I think this, this figurine is probably the one of the best ones to learn to paint on. Uh, just because there's not a lot of super details to it. And you can practice. You can never have too many frog emits in your, in your collection. So you make a mistake, you can buy another one. And make that, and try again. Now we're going to get a little dirty here. Because we got to get his under parts now. So definitely something I'd recommend to new painters. I think this is one of those great models that's just, it's fun. There is no wrong or right answer to how you want to paint them. This is my interpretation of them. You can make it to where he is. <laughs> it's, a, it's a zombie. Is that what it is? It's a zombie? He's watching his kids YouTube on the side, so if you can hear that, I'm sorry, but that's the life of a parent, right? That's the dirt. That's the dirt? Yeah. Yeah, you're right. That that's is the, the dirt. dirt. Yeah. yeah. We're gonna have fun doing his base. The only advice I give you on the base is be careful what kind of green you want to use because you don't want the base and the and the feet to like, blend together. I like frog emus in Godzilla. You like frog emus in Godzilla. Who's your favorite character in Godzilla? Is it Mothra? No. No? Who's your favorite? All right, now we're just getting his all the cracks of his feet and such, and just the little bits and pieces. Okay, and he is base coated. All right, purple mouth. Remember, you said, Daddy, I want him to have a purple mouth. You paint my goblins for me. I did paint the goblins for you. Yes. Is what for you? The brown man is for me. Well, I'm going to use them too. Is that okay? Yeah. Thank you. You're so kind. Um, what's the brown man doing? He's getting ready to attack some unsuspecting travelers. Or maybe he's going to eat the horses that the travelers left sitting there. And or... Look at this tongue. The tongue. Yep. The tongue. The tongue. He got, he, he got in his tongue. Yeah, well, base code normally is boring, but that's what children are for to make things not boring, right? They want to be involved, and you got to come to a point where you're like, I'm going to let you be involved in my hobbies and what I want to do, so... Jack is going to be the start of including the kids in this froggy myth. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. Is the dinosaur up here? I think my daughter will be excited to paint yeah. her figurines in front of this, you guys. This frog me was, uh, what the frog me was, he was, uh, 
<laughs> yep. When I do the, when I do the detail work, will, which is great about this figurine. I think this this figurine is probably the one of the best ones to learn to paint on, uh, just because there's not a lot of super details to it, and you can practice. You can never have too many frog emits in your, in your collection. So you make a mistake, you can buy another one, and make that and try again. Now we're gonna get a little dirty here because we gotta get his. Under parts now. So definitely something I'd recommend to new painters. I think this is one of those great models that's just, it's fun. There is no wrong or right answer to how you want to paint them. This is my interpretation of them. You can make it to where he is. <laughs> Is that what it is? Is it a zombie? He's watching his kids YouTube on the side, so if you can hear that, I'm sorry, but that's the life of a parent, right? That's the dirt. That's the dirt? Yeah. Yeah, you're right. That that's is the, the dirt. dirt. Yeah. yeah. We're gonna have fun doing his base. The only advice I give you on the base is be careful what kind of green you want to use because you don't want the base and the and the feet like, to blend together. I like frog emus in Godzilla. You like frog emus in Godzilla. Who's your favorite character in Godzilla? Is it Mothra? No. No? Who's your favorite? All right, now we're just getting his all the cracks of his feet and such, and just the little bits and pieces. Okay, and he is base coated. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and pause the video, let him dry, then we'll go to the next step of washing. Okay. As you can see, the frog emeth is dry. Uh, we got good coverage. I'm not seeing any really gaps anywhere. You see, I have like a little little bit of lighting down here, which is actually really good. That really helps out. So now we're gonna do is we're gonna go to our goblin green. Now again, these colors are just what I think we should be doing. Uh, my son's uh, gonna be playing with the frog emeth, so I'm gonna spray him with lacquer and stuff like that, and then. I'm going to use them also in my D&D campaigns. But his favorite color is green. So you can pick any green you want. You can pick a light green. You can pick a darker green. It doesn't really matter. It's whatever you're, whatever you feel is necessary. And I forgot to get my dry brush out. So we are going to be dry brushing quite a big area. So you try to use a bigger dry brush. Um, if you got a smaller one, that's fine. It's just going to take a little longer. But we want to make sure we have a nice contrast. So see how light green that is compared to the darker green? What that's going to do, it's going to really pop out the raised edges. So what we're going to do is we're going to just get our dry brush. We're just going to tap it like that. We're then going to just wipe off the majority of the paint. See how that works? Then when you start hitting these areas, you'll see like how the creases will start popping out more. And the wash that we used will stay in those recesses, keeping that shading effect, which is effectively cheating because what some people do is they'll, the opposite is you paint the base and you just layer on layer on layer and only hit those, hit those areas. Now, if you were going to do in competitions or, you know, commissioned work for someone who's paid you to make a model then sure you can that's probably the way you want to go because 
those do look a lot better. But this is going with the four-year-old and my crew on tabletop. So they'll appreciate it. And it's going to be tabletop ready. So you want to just hit the creases areas. So you don't want to do like the top thigh right there. You just want to do the sides right here. His kneecap, kind of where the skin's being stretched. And that'll add that lighting effect of the skin's kind of moving and stretching. And create a shadow, a nice shadow effect. See how the creases are really starting to pop out more. That's what I like to see. All right. So we'll do down the tentacle here. Because, again, the tentacle is going to have some warts, indentations. And the WizKids did a great job with these models. They're really, really, really creating a lot of good detail for, like, an amazing price. I remember when models like this were really expensive. So... Body, down the belly, because I really want those pieces to come really pressed out. Now you can, if you actually put too much paint on there, on your brush during the over during the dry brushing, you'll do what's known as overbrush. And in this model, I think you're not you're you're, you're not going to hurt anything. So this is a great model, like I said, to practice on. So take some liberties, you know, start working on new techniques. All right. I want to contrast, so I want to get his feet, his toes. Because, yes, he w we will paint the base like a swamp. Sorry. But I don't want, I want there to be contrast between the base and the feet. So what I'm going to do now is just hit the corners of his toes, uh, the round parts of his toes, the heel. So you see how the heel back in there? You know, where he's applying pressure on his body, where the skin stretched, raised, things like that. We're looking for inconsistencies because that's the great thing about this, about complete nature. You know, no armor, no nothing like that. You're not supposed to be symmetrical 100%. There's supposed to be a little bit of inconsistencies as the skin has adapted over the years. To the terrain you're going to be letting your frog game live in. Okay. So. I think that's a good amount of dry brushing. And you'll probably, the wet palette I'm using. Got a little overzealous there. I forgot to wipe off the excess. Problem with doing this, you're gonna you're gonna go back and do touch ups. So just kind of remember where the touch up is gonna be. Uh, mainly his tentacles here kind of touch below the base. You can see there. So you can see my fingers are getting turned green. Um, so we'll have to go back and probably touch up there. So try to keep the area you're touching minimal. I want to get his lips because we're about to do the mouth. So I want his jawline. I want his lip. I want his lip to really pop out and see how that lip is popping out now it's a little more a little brighter on those around those lips there see now if you want to you can go in here and you can actually hit a different shade of green if you want to go lighter green or like a different color like pustule modules uh, poisonous modules things like that but the froggy myth does not have I don't believe he has poison attacks he just swallows you whole essentially so yeah but if you wanted to do that it's your campaign it's your model you spent your money on it you paint your heart's content but like if you wanted to add like make these warts colorful to kind of indicate he's got poison to him. That's totally fine too. So I'm liking everything we've done so far. I think we got good coverage on the dry brushing. I think it really made the 
Let's get these eyes just a little more. I think those eyes look like they pop out. Now you can see kind of you can see even from this angle coming straight down how the eye looks different than the body. That's what that texturing does of dry brushing. I want those lips to be just a little lighter. So just a little bit of paint. Hit those lips like so. Bam, see how they come out? They pop out. And the gums will be purple. And that purple we're about to do on them. It's going to be really good. Now, see how, since we painted the whole eye white or green, so we now have a nice little crease there. We can use some shadow effects like a black wash, which I'm going to go ahead and do. First, I'm going to get this dry brush ready for we dry brush the pink. So I'm just going to get a little bit of black wash in there. See how that works. Okay. So that's good. I like that. I like that a lot. I want the eye to really pop out. Okay. And when we're going to paint yellow over that, it's going to look great. All right. Let's do his mouth. We're going to be using heavy violet. We're just gonna get a little bit of wet on my brush. Like that. We're just gonna get in there. See how it's turned purple. Now we're gonna do his gums not straight off. That way we can get make sure we get plenty of coverage. And we're working towards a common goal of where we want to stop painting. So this is a part like you can gotta be careful because you'll actually paint his mouth or the outside of his mouth purple. You gotta be careful. It's still a pretty big area, so great again for learning, but you can still make some mistakes. And just all the mistake will do is just means you gotta cover up and you gotta go back and redo stuff, which is not the end of the world, but just time consuming and annoying. And you're like me and you have kids. Time is of the essence. Okay. We're just gonna make sure we get total coverage. Of his mouth. Okay, then we want to paint. This comes the fun part. We want to paint his gum line. And you want to you want to paint the teeth purple as well. That way, when you paint the teeth, the gum looks like it's actually holding onto the tooth. Because if you try to paint separately. There's going to be a gap between the teeth color and the purple gum. We don't want that. So we're just going to come right in like this. Yep. Paint those teeth purple. OK, 
Okay. Okay, so that is what the mouth looks like. We got nice coverage between purple and green. You notice how there's no gray popping out from the original color of the, of the mold. And we're going to let that dry. Then we're going to, well, actually here, let's do this. Let's go ahead. Let's go ahead and get the eyes done as well so we use pale yellow pale yellow for the eye let's see if I can get that to focus that you know pale yellow I'm just gonna use a small brush Okay, so you see how the shadow effect of the green and shadow wash make that look like it's actually socketed in there, not just painted side by side. So that's where that edge comes in. And we're going to highlight by actually taking some more of that goblin green. We're just going to do a little edge around, around to really highlight the, the edge of the lid, eyelid. So we're going to let that dry, and we'll be right back. Okay, so his mouth is pretty dry. Now we want to hit it with ink. Now, you can use a purple wash if you want to to add more shadow. I like the ink because I want it to be just a little more, I want it to have a little more vibrance to it. And it kind of pulls in. Again, we're looking for depth here. So just we're going to get that ink in there. And it's going to add... Kind of, it's going to kind of get those recesses that, you know, maybe our paint will, won't, that way if our paint shrinks, well, it won't be that big a deal. And it'll get in those recesses from when the paint shrinks. So you can see, let me get the roof of the mouth, and the back of the throat. Okay. And then what we're going to do is we're going to hit those teeth. So again, the gum line, the teeth, everything. Got a little bit on the lip, that's okay. We'll just take that right off and boom, we're good to go. Okay, then we're gonna just get right up in there. As you can see, we're hitting the teeth, the gums, make sure we hit be on the on the lips. We're just gonna go right down the tongue. Remember the inks and washes. Now the ink is gonna be just straight the color you're looking for. So like if you're doing uh, if you're doing translucent, you want to use an ink instead of a wash because an ink is just like I said straight color. Whereas a wash, there's gonna be a shadow effect to it. So there's gonna be uh, black ink in there as well. So you got to be careful if you use washes versus inks. There is a very large difference. So we're going to let that dry. Okay. But see how his mouth looks a lot like brighter. And we'll be right back. Okay. 
So his mouth is pretty dry, little wet parts in the corners. That's not going to be a problem because honestly, we're not going to be getting in there. We're not going to be doing dry brushing in there. So not a big deal. All right. So before when we did our dry brush, we had to we use the green. We got that done. And now the brush is dry again. Make sure you really get all the moisture off. Because now what we're going to do is we're going to use a lighter purple using purple worm. Don't need a lot. You're going to see the difference. You're going to see that this is a lot lighter than this one. Okay, again, we're just going to tap it, get most of it off. And we're just going to hit those areas. Get the raised parts. Get his tongue. See how that makes the tongue just kind of pop out? Get a little texture. Okay. I'm going to get this part right here. Now, that part I want to keep a little darker just because I want to. Want to feel like it's a tougher piece of meat. Okay. So that tongue just kind of popped out on. Popped out. Now what we're going to do is we're going to just get the dry brush clean. Now we're just going to highlight using pink. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the pink right here. Check it up a little more. Okay. Now I'm going to paint these nodules red, but I want to paint them pink first. What that's going to do is I want to paint, I want the pink to be kind of at the base. And that will add the effect of the flesh holding on to it. Okay, and then I just want to add, I was going to just, Barely tap that pink, but no, I want to want to suggest the nodules here. We're doing this on the fly, making changes as we go. Okay, now this brush has a little bit of glue on it, so I'm actually going to retire it now. Now what we're going to do is we're going to let that dry, and we're going to move on to the teeth. I told you this model wasn't going to take too long to do. So we're going to use skeleton bone. that right there we're just gonna do every little tooth and what you want to do is you want to get the tooth you want to go around in a circle that we get both sides
for the people wondering. It's quiet time for Jack. <sighs> and it'd be really hard to try to do detail with him here. Crawl all over me, so. Okay, now let's get our fine point back because the next step we're going to do, we're waiting for the teeth and the mouth to dry, get a little bit of black. This is still Vallejo, just their model color, just because game stores in my area, either I don't get there in time or they're just having a hard time getting... Vallejo colors. You don't want a lot on your brush. We're just going to do a straight line right across his eye. Boom. Okay. Now, I want to take a little bit of go gory red, okay, and I'm just going to get the, whoops, didn't shake it up enough. Okay, then we're going to do. Take a little bit of our gory red. We're just going to do the tips of this guy. That's just going to add a little bit more contrast to the nodules that are on the tips of his tongue to help grip things. As purple starts to stretch, it turns more pink, and then we have the red tips. 
So that's what the pink base is going to do. It's going to have that little hint of pink in there. It's that as the flesh transitions to that hard nodule, I think that would be red. Now, his teeth, you can do a sepia wash. You don't have to do a sepia wash. You don't want to. Matter of fact, I think I'm going to leave his teeth the way they are. I think that's actually pretty, pretty good. Well, that, excluding the base, is a completed frogemoth. What I'd highly recommend you do now, well, we'll just go ahead and do it real fast since we have time. Didn't take too long. We're just going to get a big globule of green wash. We're going to do the base. Now, I like green wash for bases because I think it adds a great, like, texture. Because I don't want the whole thing to be, like, one solid green piece. I like the inconsistent, like the pooling up effect and things like that. So just we're going to get big globules. And again, if it gets on your model, it's not a big deal. Because the model's supposed to look like he is in the swamp. But see how that green pooling up and not being one solid color, letting some of the gray pop through. Then after this dries, I'm going to go outside and spray it with lacquer. What that lacquer will do is it will protect it from the four-year-old for as long as it can. And my adult friends who are have the same hygiene and manners as my four-year-old. One thing I recommend before you spray, just take a good look over it make sure... You don't have any, like, have any bits and pieces of gray sticking out. I think all of it looks good. I think we got good coverage. I'm just going to just gonna put that right there for the fact that I, that's the part I touched the most. And then we'll just scoop up some of that. And we'll just, there we go. Okay. Frogemoth, green base. I think the base looks good. I think everything looks good. You can add more touch ups later on if you want to. Again, this is all what I would paint it like. And I say he is done. Yep. This has been Chaz. Have a great day.